Hey guys, DaVinci Resolve for the iPad has a new update. Now we have version 20.0.1. That's a very minor one. If you come here to the App Store, you can always see here what's new. When you click on this one, you see the whole history of all of the updates. And today we have an update for support of Blackmagic RAW SDK 4.6, addressed incorrect sorting of the media pool clips when added in timeline, addressed music editor not retaining settings on reload, addressed beat marker display when adjusting the music editor, audio assistance no longer applies fade out at the end of the mix, addressed occasional speed editor issues adding the smooth cut, addressed incorrect subtitle animations when appending words, improved the note cache retention for color changes in other layers, addressed the magic mask cache resets in multiple scenarios, addressed the incorrect thumbnails for ACES 2.0 timelines, addressed an issue consolidating Blackmagic RAW spilled in, uh, recordings, and deleting projects now reliably removes project cache and general performance and stabilization issues when you uh, improvements not issues <laughs> if you open davinci resolve the most important still all the other pages are working what i tried to do now is i was actually sending them an email like maybe a week ago and also a couple of the followers here on the channel basically from our community davinci resolve they were reaching out to black magic and asking about we cannot do any speed ramps anymore because if you watched my last update video davinci resolve 20 this is an hour long video where i explain all of the new features so if you haven't watched that one definitely check out that video because there are so many amazing features especially AI features that we got with DaVinci Resolve 20 but there's one problem with the newest update the idea is amazing we get a complete new keyframe editor and with this keyframe editor it's easier to do keyframes animations and smooth animations but this tool isn't finished yet in the iPad version there's a way to open that on the iPad but it's completely um closed that in itself wouldn't be the problem because it's a new feature where we're not used to have it but with this update they also removed the old way of doing it which was retime curve in the edit page you were able to right click on a clip and then here where it says retime controls there was another one it was called retime curve and you could open that one and you could do speed ramps this was a this was available since davinci resolve on the ipad came out but i also get it the other pages are not officially launched i mean even if they keep them in like they don't hide it from us. And so I have to say thank you for Blackmagic Design because because of that, DaVinci Resolve on the iPad is stronger than it actually is on the surface because without that, we only would have the cut page and the color page. Still two amazing pages, but, and I said that in my other video, the main reason now is we can do speed ramps with this software, which brings the software into a different category. Without that, it lowers the bar because you can have now software like CapCut or InShot that's our smartphone apps that can do smooth speed ramps and DaVinci Resolve at the moment on the iPad can't do it. So the workaround at the moment the, from the official uh, feedback from Blackmagic Design is that you should do speed ramps on the desktop version. Yes, everything works there with the new keyframe editor. I have no idea when they will bring the keyframe editor to the iPad, but I hope it doesn't take a year or something i really hope that this is a feature that gets introduced maybe after we get ipad os 26 because there's a lot of improvements with the ipad os and maybe that solves a lot of the problems that they have right now i don't know what they're facing my consideration was even if the edit page and stuff like that was not officially launched because that tool was actually working not proper i get it we changed to this new tool because the new tool will even be better on the ipad when it will come out but we were capable of doing it. And this is also why I'm bringing attention to this. I'm not sure if Blackmagic watches my videos or something, but if you guys are watching, I think you maybe underrate the power of uh, DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. I mean, you know the power of DaVinci Resolve because you created DaVinci Resolve, obviously. But what I mean, I think you maybe think that the most users only use the cut and the color page on the iPad and that's it. But it's not true. I can prove with most of my customers that I get and also the people here on my channel that we are using it with whatever you got, like what, what you got to us. So like we are open the other pages and we are aware that some of the features of the other pages are not working properly, but whatever works is a bonus and like it is what makes DaVinci Resolve on the iPad outstanding to the, comp to the competition. And the last time when I had this DaVinci Resolve 20 update video, this was the first time since all the update videos that I actually had to announce in the end, even when we got so amazing features, it felt like a downgrade because a basic thing like speed ramping, and I have to just be honest, like maybe Blackmagic, if you're watching, this is a basic feature. 
like of course AI features are amazing and I don't want to play that one down and I ho I'm so happy that you are always pushing the limit what is possible right but speed ramps is important for many many video editors and to do this even on the iPad it is important even if it was a pain in the ass to do it I'm honest but you could do it and that means that this software was always better than most of the other softwares because even if it was clunky you could do it but now you can't do it now you have to go to another app or you have to go to an ipad and also my brand is basically showing that you can do most of the stuff just on an ipad so i will not even if i have the ventures off on the desktop and i probably will go to the desktop but if i try to keep a ipad only workflow i have to now go to a complete different software while i purchased the studio version for that i know the studio version doesn't mean that the other pages are included this is a false idea that lots of my customers or viewers here have as well. They buy the studio version and they wonder why are the other pages not open? But obviously I understand that this is a problem of the viewer side that they think because I buy studio, I should get everything. No, no, that's not how it works. Also for you guys, if you're not watching, these pages are always free. It's additional features, AI features that are hidden behind the studio version. You have to go to the Blackmagic web, web, um, design website. There is a whole document about the features, which of the features are available in studio and which are in uh, the free version. Anyway, in the free version, there's a lot of and a ton of features. The one that we are talking about today, Read Time Curve, the old one or the keyframe editor is in the free version. And it is just sad that we don't have it on the iPad. I can just tell that again. If I now go back for the last three weeks and basically every second comment that I get in different videos, not just the update video, is I can't open Read Time Curve anymore. Where can I do speed ramp? I can't do it anymore. Daniel, do you have any solution? And I would love to share a solution since DaVinci Resolve 20 came out. I was not able to open the retime curves. I tried so many different ways to open it. I couldn't open it and the new keyframe editor doesn't work. So at the moment, I can't or we can't do speed ramps on the iPad version. And I can only repeat myself, this is a bummer because I think this is a basic feature for a professional software that some of the other simple smartphone editing softwares don't have that, I understand. Also, I don't wanna now play everything down. I think I said that also in the DaVinci 20 update video. If you come to the cut page, since a couple of updates, this is not just introduced with 20, you can actually do speed ramps, not speed ramps, or the old way of speed ramps, not smooth speed ramps, you can do speed ramps. And the way that it works is actually, if you come in here, you can always right click and add a speed point. When you add a speed point, now you have here a speed point, you can add another speed point, let's say for example here, add a speed point, to this position and now this piece here i can come in here into this right here and change the speed for example this one set to let's say for example 500 so this is now 500 speed so you can do the the easy way of speed ramps to speed something up and then go back normal or slow something down so it's not that it's completely not possible for many users that is enough i totally get it but for the more advanced users who like to have the smooth speed ramps the curves that was possible by going to the edit page and open the retime curve in the past but that doesn't work i know i'm just rambling at the moment because that update didn't introduce a lot to us it's more fixes i was sh immediately after that update i was looking if did Blackmagic maybe open it up that we can open Retime Curve, but it doesn't work. So that's why I was talking so much about Retime Curve and also for everyone who watched it now until here that you know at the moment it's not there and Blackmagic Design is not prioritizing it. And they said, I think this was one of the subscribers that showed me a message. They, But because to my message, they haven't replied yet. So maybe in the future, then I will make a video and show you what they actually said. But in his respond for Blackmagic Design, they said this is not a priority because these pages were never officially launched. That's why they didn't look at them. And to be also fair, I don't know what is holding back the keyframe editor. It could be something, I said this a couple of times here on my channel in the past, that it's not as easy as just programming something. The problem is that the iPad OS is more limited than for example, Mac or desktop. That means if you are a programmer and you program something and it works on desktop and, and there, it could be even if you try to make it work and you reprogram something, that it's not as easy to make it work on the iPad. And maybe they even wait for the new update because with the new update, there's more features available and we're getting close Closer, not yet, but we're getting closer that these two systems combine. If you ask me, will they ever combine? No, I don't think so, because you have to think about it. 
um, when Apple introduced the iPhone and also the iPad, they did something that all the desktop versions like Mac and also Microsoft never did in the past, which is the biggest income for Apple. They introduced the App Store and everything has to go through the storefront of Apple. So if they would make it the same, like let's say if I could install Mac OS here on my iPad, they would remove the capability of looking at what apps we install. Because on a Mac, you can also go outside of an app store and install an app, and that works because it was always in the past like that. But with iOS, it's always the storefront. That means 30% from wherever you buy goes to the pocket of Black um, Apple. That means if you look at this, if you would have the company, even if you try to make this more and more and cannibalize the MacBook. Number one, they try to keep the MacBooks around as long as they can because they can charge two devices. Obviously, lots of people spoke about that. Number two, if they cannibalize the MacBook, they want to make sure that the future looks like this, that the idea that every app, every software, everything that you buy, 30% goes into the pocket of Apple. And that is let's say this, you, some people say it's evil, other people say this is one of the smartest moves that they ever did. I mean, they did the same with the music industry when they launched iTunes and pod, um, iPods and everything. What many people don't understand, yes, the device was revolutionary. The idea behind to sell people for $1 a song and then also getting 30% cut of that or even 50, I don't know if it's music, but that is what actually made Apple one of the biggest giants in the music industry till today. And the same happened when they introduced iOS for smartphones and iPad. Okay, that was my rambling for today. This is the new update. Have fun. There's still a lot of powerful features, so I'm not saying that DaVinci Resolve at all is a bad software. I hope that the fix or the updates for the read time curve or the keyframe editor will come very, very soon that we can do speed rams on the iPad again. And if you just want a simple one, that's why I showed you that in the video today, you can do a simple speed ram, and that's for most reels and everything, that is more than enough. So tune out. If you haven't seen the update video DaVinci Resolve 20, I just rec I recommend you watch it because there's so many features. I showed you every single feature of the update of DaVinci Resolve 20. So check it out that video. See you on the next video. I'm Daniel. Bye.